Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Reminder to IRA IRA owners age 70 and a half or over. Qualified charitable distributions are great options for making tax-free gifts to charity. Honestly, uh, isn't it funny how even the IRS is like, yeah, if you want your money to actually help people, for goodness sake, don't give it to us unless we make you. And it's like, but wait a second, IRS, aren't you a charity too? I mean, the government deals with like social security, Medicare, and all kinds of social programs. If you're like a charity helping people out, why aren't you advising us to give our charitable contributions to you? And the IRS is like, yeah, but we're so inefficient, it's ridiculous. I mean, for example, just last year, we've spent $5 trillion anally probing a rare species of bat to find the cure to COVID, only to later find out the bats were actually just rats with wings stapled to their backs. Apparently part of some guy's Halloween decorations. Yeah, I mean, seriously, best to give the money to charity if you can. I mean, honestly, like giving the money to us is basically equivalent to stuffing the money directly up Hunter Biden's nose, which while entertaining is not actually, not actually charity, really. Any case, first to joke. The IRS auditor actually told me cleanliness is next to godliness. Remember, cleanliness is next to godliness. So make it kind of clean, but not too much. Amanda, more ambiguous on the dusting. And I was like, well, yeah, maybe, but I'd rather try to emulate God himself rather than some super clean dude that just happened to be sitting next to him. Look at you guys. No offense, Fry, but you've become a fat sack of crap. Sack? And Bender, your beer belly's so big, your door won't even close. And that doesn't even make sense. Come on. You know what I mean? I honestly, like, what if God happened to be judging some super clean freak murderer dude that day, like Dexter or something? If there is some mental health foundation that raised money for people like you, please be sure to let me know. So the super clean murderer dude just happened to be next to God? Just before God smited the snooper clean murderer dude, casting him into the fiery pits of hell? You're gonna regret this the rest of your life. Both seconds of it. The rubbing alcohol hand sanitizer the clean freak bathed in every 15 minutes, bursting into a ball of flames on the way down. Like, I, I don't want to emulate that guy. IR 2022-201, November 17th, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded IRA IRA owners age 70 and a half or over of their option to transfer up to $100,000 to charity tax-free each year. These transfers, known as Qualified Charitable Distributions or QCDs, offer eligible older Americans a great way to easily give to charity before the end of the year. Moreover, for those who are at least 72, QCDs count toward the IRA owner's required minimum distribution, the RMD, for the year. So let's first take a step back with this IRA and think about the IRA in general, the required minimum distributions, and how the charitable contributions might fit into this. So usually when we're putting money into an IRA, note that the IRA is not like the only investment tool you can put money in in order to save for retirement. We could put money just into stocks and bonds, for example. We usually put money under some kind of an umbrella of a retirement type of account because uh, we're gonna get a tax benefit at the point in time that we put the money in to something like an IRA. We're usually gonna be paying less taxes at that point uh, in time, and then the earnings are gonna be deferred in terms of the taxes as well. That's why we do it. And so then the IRS is, is so now we're, our money's been restricted to us but we also got that tax benefit side of things. So there's a pro and con to it. Then at some point towards retirement and retirement age, maybe we don't even need the money that's in the IRA. And we know that if I pull the money out of the IRA, it's gonna cause me tax problems possibly because I'm gonna have to pay taxes on it when I pull the money out because it's a deferral. I didn't pay taxes when I put the money in. So then at some point in time, the government's gonna actually force us to take the money out. Those are the required minimum distributions. They do so in order to 
get their piece of the money because it's been deferred up until that point in time. Now they want to be collecting the tax on it. So they want to require people to pull it out at uh, some point. So then the question is, well, if I'm going to if I'm going to pull the money out, is there some way that I can get a tax benefit uh, by giving the money to, to charity or something like that? And that's one place where you can think of the charitable contributions, the, the QCDs, uh, the qualified charitable distributions that could come into play in kind of conjunction with your IRAs. So that's the general idea. OK, so how to set up a QCD? So any IRA owner who wishes to make a QCD for 2022 should contact their IRA trustee soon so that the trustee will have time to complete the transaction before the end of the year. Now, we're talking about cash based transactions typically here. So if you want to do this kind of activity, you've got to plan for it and do it now because we're rolling up, of course, on the end of the year. So normally distributions from a traditional individual retirement arrangement and IRA are taxable when received with a QCD. However, these distributions become tax free so long as they're paid directly from the IRA to an eligible charitable organization. QCDs can be can be made electronically directly to the charity or by check payable to the charity and IRA distribution such as an electronic payment made directly to the IRA owner does not count as a QCD. Likewise, a check made payable to the IRA owner is not a QCD. Each year an IRA uh, owner age 70 and a half or over can exclude from gross income up to $100,000 of these QCDs. Right. So obviously for taxes, income is bad. If you've got to pull money out of the IRA and if you have to include it in income, that would not be good. If you can not include it in income, possibly by having a contribution to an IRA, that would, of course, uh, generally be good. Notice that if you had if if you were to just count it as income and then deduct it as you normally get a deduction for the IRA, it would be on a Schedule A, which you get a lot less of a benefit from possibly due to the fact that uh, you might not be standardizing uh, and might not even have access really to the to the deduction there. So so it's a little bit different. But anyways, you could I won't get into the details. So for a married couple, uh, if both spouses are age 70 and a half or over and both have IRAs, each spouse can exclude up to 100,000 for a total of up to $200,000 per year. The QCD option is available regardless of whether an eligible IRA owner itemizes deductions on Schedule A. So Schedule A, again, is the normal place where you would take uh, charitable contributions, although there's like a $300 amount uh, if you're not Schedule A. Transfer amounts are not taxable and no deduction is available for the transfer. Uh, report currently. A 2022 QCD must be reported on the 2022 federal income tax return normally filed during the 2023 tax year filing season. So clearly 2022 is coming to an end. We've got to do the reporting generally by April 15, 2023 for the 2022 tax year. So in early 2023, the IRA owner will receive form 1099-R. There's a link to that here from the IRA trustee. So usually a 1099-R would show the distribution. You want to make sure that if you have a distribution that's not going to be subject to tax, that you have set it up properly so that they have the proper code in the 1099-R to indicate you know, the type of transfer it was. So trustee that shows an IRA distribution made during the calendar year for 2022, including both regular distributions and QCDs. The total distribution is in box one on that form. There's no special code for a QCD. So like other IRA distribution, QCDs are shown on line form, line four of form 1040 or form 1040 SR. There's links to that here. If part or all of an IRA distribution is a QCD, enter the total amount of the IRA distribution in line 4A. This is the amount shown in box one on form uh, 1099R. Then if the full amount of the distribution is a QCD, enter zero on line 4B. So in essence, you're still going to be reporting what was shown on the 1099, but I believe 4B is going to be the taxable amount. So if it wasn't taxable because it was a qualified a QCD, then you would have zero on that line. And again, you want to make sure that you're talking to the, the issuer of the 1099 to make sure that everything 
is on board in the event that the IRS has questions about, about it or audits it in some way. So if only part of the QCD, the remaining taxable portion is normally entered on line 4B. Either way, be sure to enter uh, QCD next to line 4B. Uh, further details will be in the final uh, instructions to the 2022 Form 1040. So get a receipt. QCDs are not deductible as charitable contributions on Schedule A, but, but as with deductible contributions, the donor must get a written acknowledgement for a contribution from the charitable organization before filing their tax return. So notice what's happening here is if the money comes out of the IRA, which you would have had to record as income, but instead you're giving it directly to the charity, instead of getting a deduction for the contributions, you're getting a reduction of the income. So what you cannot do is get a reduction of the income and record it on Schedule A. That would be double dipping, right? Then you'd be doing two, you know, that'd be double dipping. Uh, but so even though you reduce, you're kind of doing a similar thing, although it's probably a bigger benefit to reduce the income oftentimes because again, the Schedule A could have issues. It could be phasing out if you're high income, you might not have a Schedule in A if you're low income. Uh, and so, and so, but you still need to back up and support the amount that's going to the charity with the information in the event that you get audited for that. So in general, the acknowledgement must state the date and amount of the contribution and indicate whether the donor received anything of value in return. For details, see the acknowledgement section in publication 526 available on irs.gov. There's a link to that here. For more information about IRA distributions and QCDs, see publication 590B also available on irs.gov. There's a link to that here. There's links to all the stuff I said there was a link to here. There'll be a link to this in the description.